video about to start. I hear a Subi rumble. It's hilarious because he's probably only on like the third floor right now. What's up guys, we're back. Uh, finally, it's been a really long time. It's only been like a month. Um, channel's not dead. Lately I've been uploading to my car groups channel, The Red Suns. If you want, you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, I had a couple cinematics, those took some time. But yeah, we're back now. Finally making a video. And we're gonna be talking about if there's gonna be a new joint operation between Toyota and Subaru for the new next generation 86. All right, first of all, are they even coming back for a second generation? Yes, obviously they are. Um, Toyota and Subaru announced that they were going to be doing a second generation of this car, which is amazing news because that leaves some excitement to see what they're gonna do next. So how are they gonna improve on an already amazing car? That's something that we can go ahead and uh, talk about in this video. What are they gonna do that's different from this car? Um, and you know, how could they possibly make this car any better? This guy in exhaust. So now that we know when it's coming back, we have a couple questions about this car. What new do they have for this car? Um, what innovations are they gonna bring to the table? What exactly are they gonna do to change it to uh, keep buyers interested? Because I'm definitely interested. And um, let's go ahead and explore those right now. Number one, this is pretty much the biggest thing everybody's been talking about since the beginning of this FRS. Will it have any more power? From everything that I've read, yes, this car should have more power. It can have anywhere from uh, 20 horsepower to a 40 horsepower bump we can expect to see Jeez. and um, hopefully maybe if we're lucky we'll see somewhere up to uh, 60 to 70 horsepower range uh, it's probably unlikely that we're gonna see that but I'll go ahead and explain why we it's possible that we can see that horsepower gain in the next generation 86 or BRZ. So now that we have like approximate numbers and you know guesses on how much power this is going to produce, uh, we have to first figure out how is it going to get this power? What exactly are they going to do to get more horsepower out of this car? And exactly what are they going to do? There are two different motors that they could possibly be using. First, they could be using the same motor the FA20, you know, revise it, a nice new revised motor that can possibly uh, improve on internals, whatever they're gonna do, make it better to push out a little bit more horsepower. And they can make the factory tune a lot better because it's pretty trash, to be honest with you. And the second option for the motor is they could be using a uh, all new FA24 motor out of the brand new uh, Subaru Ascent, and that one's using a 2.4 liter. Uh, it's actually turbocharged. Hopefully we could be seeing that in this car, um, just at least the FA24 in general, something brand new, uh, definitely updated, and should be providing some more power out of this car. I don't believe they're gonna be using any type of Toyota motors at all. I think they're gonna stick to Subaru motors because that's the flat four, uh, it's a lot more low center of gravity and that'll keep the car handling very well. They've been nice and compact. Um, this car itself sits as like a front mid-engine car, which is like pretty freaking sick because not very many cars have that. I hope that's a feature that they want to keep in the car because me personally, I love the fact that it has a Subaru motor in it. Um, I know it does hold it back just because of the fact that um, it does have not too much power. It does have that torque dip. There's only a couple really like pitfalls I feel with this motor right now because it's to me for me it's super reliable um, it makes great noises uh, right now I'm running E85 on it and uh, unequal length headers with a tune and it's pushing you know 40 more horsepower than stock and it is um, it has no torque dip which is amazing that's the biggest thing about this motor that like people didn't like because the power in that fat torque dip in the middle 
So I got rid of it completely. And to me, I have no complaints with this motor right now. So now that we know what two options they're gonna be using for the motors, now we have four different variants that they can use. This first option, I kind of hope they don't use. Um, they can just update the FA20 uh, that's in this car, maybe push it a couple, like 20-ish horsepower, keep it NA. Don't really want to see that because I feel like that's kind of a lazy way out in a way. But if they do, either way, I know it's still going to be a good car. I really do hope they try and innovate a little bit more than just update it slap it in the new one, call it all new. We also have a second option, which is the FA20 that's revised and is turbocharged just like in the WRX. Obviously, there's gonna be a little bit different piping. The turbo is gonna be in a different location uh, due to the fact that it has a different engine bay, different engine capacity. They wanna keep the center of gravity low. Um, that can possibly push up the horsepower from 205, what it is right now, to like 260 I believe. So the WRX motor makes 268 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque. So uh, I don't know if we'd be seeing the exact numbers like that if they did decide to turbo it because the different turbo location, whatever, whatever. But we'd be seeing somewhere close to a 50, 60, 70-ish horsepower range. Uh, I don't think they're gonna do that one either, but it would be nice um, to go ahead and add a turbo at least on this one if they do decide to keep the FA20. And that brings us on to the FA24 motor out of the Subaru Ascent. A lot of companies use the same motors, like the FA20 is used in this car, it's used in the uh, Forester, it's used in the uh, WRX, it's probably used in the, in the Impreza too as well. I'm thinking they're gonna put the FA24 in this car. So now that we got that started, they can either turbo it or leave it in A. First we start off with, with the turbo. Uh, they can literally just bring it out, get different piping, whatever. The Ascent makes 260 horsepower and 277 foot-pounds of torque. So this car is going to have definitely more torque just because it's the bigger motor. It's obviously turbo and um, that would do amazing in this car. Uh, but they would have to change a couple other things just to make sure it can put down the power and not just spin tires. And it also would add a little bit more weight, getting a little bit more hefty. And the motor is gonna get a little bit bigger. They're gonna add a turbo to it. Then you have to cool that power down. Then you have to put the power down. You need more hefty like suspension, uh, drivetrain components just to be able to put it down. I don't think they're gonna do that because obviously it's supposed to be a bare bones, back to basic sports car. It's supposed to be uh, low cost lightweight, rear wheel drive, and very, very balanced. So, I don't think they're gonna be using that. Okay, now on to the FA24 motor, naturally aspirated. This is the one that I think they're going to put in this car, depending on if it is a good, reliable motor that uh, will take good power aftermarket. I feel like that's what they're gonna do because um, they don't want to add too much weight to this car. Like I said, it's supposed to be lightweight, bare bones. Um, and also, I don't think they want to make as much power as the WRX because really this is just a real wheel drive coupe. It's supposed to be affordable. Turbos will add more money. They want to be lightweight. That would add more weight to it. And it's kind of like the Porsche Cayman to the Porsche 911. I don't believe they will put more power than the WRX because that WRX is all wheel drive, it's supposed to be, you know, their sporty car, then they have the STI as well. So I think they're gonna keep this below horsepower numbers for the WRX. And when you think about it, this car is so lightweight that it doesn't need as much power. It doesn't take much horsepower to move 27, 2800 pounds at the end of the day. Uh, it would be nice if they add more, but more horsepower adds more weight and I don't think they really want to add more weight, even though it would add more horsepower. I do hope that they keep the compression ratio uh, high at 12 to 5 to 1, like they do have it in this car, because if it uses a 10 to 1 compression ratio like they have in the turbo cars, uh, it will do for great for turbo applications aftermarket, but it's naturally aspirated. So uh, although 10 to 1 is like a nice, still high compression ratio car, um, 
a 12 to 5 to 1 will be better straight out of the factory. If they put the high compression ratio in this car, it'll be more, more of an efficient motor. It'll make more power and it'll also um, most likely get better gas mileage because high compression motors tend to be more efficient than the lower compression motors. I also hope they bring over that Toyota fuel injection system. Um, I feel that's, that's a very efficient system. Um, that'll also add to getting more power out of that FA24 motor. It's an efficient way to deliver fuel to the motor. So now that we know what's gonna be powering the car and how it's gonna be delivering that horsepower, let's go ahead and go on to the appearance of the car. There hasn't been you know, very much released, but there has been a couple of renderings and there's also one concept, not of the, the new 86s. It was actually a concept of like a slightly different car using the 86 chassis. We'll go ahead and get into those. First, we're gonna be taking a look at my favorite one personally. I'm just gonna say this right now. If this car looks anything like this, I would buy it on the spot because and I was pending if it has a manual transmission. If it looks like that, then I want it because it looks amazing. Uh, as you can see in the rendering right here, I don't believe this was actually made by, you know, one of the Toyota, um, you know, artists. It's just a rendering by a company. It kind of looks like it already has like a wide body kit. It already looks super aggressive. It has the vents. It has the vents on the front. It has some cool, you know, ducts in the front as well. Uh, great looking arrow. Will they go into this much detail? I highly doubt it because that is also going to add money to the production costs. Renderings will never completely look like a finished product that's ready to be sold. And especially this, this looks like something if they had added a wide body kit to it as well. The red color for it looks really great too. You can see the Toyota badging on it as well. You can see a little uh, spoiler in the back as well. It kind of reminds me of the ones that are on the 2017 ones now. Uh, something small, something nice and classy. It has a shark fin antenna. Um, I believe it has an 86 logo right there next to the, the fender garnish. Side skirts, like a little front lip. Um, overall, this, this rendering looks amazing. No doubt I would want this car if it looked anything like this. Now on to the next rendering. This is actually like number two for me out of the three. The front does kind of look a little droopy. Uh, it does kind of look like like, a, like an eagle in a way too as well. Like, you know, the beak and stuff like that. Not too big of a fan of the front. The, the headlights do look pretty nice though. And it's not like an ugly car overall. You can see like all the body lines going down the side. You see that big vent going in. I mean, the shape of this car looks really good as well. But to me, it's just like the front end that just kind of eh, meh, can, you can change it. I would probably change the front in this car. Also, you can see in this car as well uh, on that fender garnish, it's actually the, the OG uh, 86 logo with the opposing pistons going on the other sides, which is actually pretty cool. I actually prefer that to uh, other ones. And on to the last one, which to be honest, I don't really like. This one was the concept uh, that they actually made. In the front end, it just looks hideous to me. In a way, it kind of looks like a shark, but like a very poor depiction of a shark. Headlights don't look that great to me. The wheels don't look that great to me. Uh, the chassis itself looks pretty good. It's just like they changed up a bumper and the headlights and made it look kind of funky up front. Uh, wheels, obviously, you can change, do better. Paint job, you could probably change, do a little bit better. Um, it actually is like a hard top convertible. Changing it to the back here. The back, to me, doesn't look that bad, actually. Uh, it actually looks pretty good, in my opinion. And to me, it's not as good as the back on the original ones but it actually does look nice and aggressive. I'm not sure how I feel about that single type exit exhaust right there in the middle of the center exit. Uh, it does have nice little diffusers. I really do hope it looks like the red, maybe the yellow, uh, some things in the front end, maybe not on the yellow, but like if it looks like the red, that's a perfect car to me. Now that we're looking, that we looked at the exterior, we gotta look at the interior. I didn't see any, um, you know, renderings, whatever, on the interior. To be honest, I don't really care too much what the interior looks like, as long as it's still as nice as it is now. Maybe make it look a little bit, like, visually nicer. Um, maybe don't use fake carbon fiber. Please, thank you. 
I don't think they're gonna be adding too many features to this car that they already have. Uh, just because, like I said, bare bones sports car. To me, this car is gonna look good in 20 years from now because it didn't have too much complicated stuff on it to begin with. And obviously the shifter feels really good. Uh, great pedal feels. The seats is one thing that I really hope they don't change. Maybe just like the stitching, whatever, whatever. I hope they either keep the same seats in there, make it like look a little bit different, or give us a seat that slightly improves on this one, but still gives that really good feel, because these seats are amazing. I think they're the best seats you could possibly get for a car that's around $25,000, $30,000, without getting like an added Recaro type option. But overall, I don't think the interior is gonna change too much. Uh, it might be like a little bit different on the layout. The steering wheel is probably gonna change a tad bit, not too much. So yeah, guys, I think this car is gonna look great. Uh, only time will tell once we get closer to that launch date. They're saying it should release either late 2020 or very early 2021 because it's going to be for the 2021 model year. I'll definitely keep you guys updated on this. Um, I'm definitely interested. If it has a manual transmission still, which I believe it will, one of the head like executives and designers for this car said that the 86 was going to be a better driving car than the super other than that guys i'll keep you guys posted on any other updates on this car uh anything i find out i'll let you know um and obviously bring it out into the video hopefully this car is amazing um and maybe you'll be able to see one on the channel if it is what i want i'll try to be the first people that have it. other than that guys peace out i'll see you guys in the next video